My name is Daniel Bowen. I'm a composer, arranger, and founder and executive director of Symphony 21. So I'm born and raised from Salisbury, Maryland, and uh, my musical journey started early, mostly in church. That was the environment where my gift was uh, cultivated and was allowed to flourish. And um, you know, just the repetitive weekly opportunities to perform, rehearse, learn new material, uh, really taught me a lot about uh, performance, about. Uh, serving with your music and uh, leadership. So many transferable skills that I use today uh, came from that experience coming up. I'd say one of the disadvantages of being in a rural area is oftentimes you may not have the same number of examples or uh, individuals to pattern some of your ideas off of, whether it's your vision, whether it's your business, um, some of the goals and dreams you have, it may be more difficult, and especially if you're a young black male and you have thoughts about starting an orchestra or um, you know doing things in that in that regard, it may not be uh, that common to find those types of individuals living in a rural area. So. For me, it, it really, I had to dig deep in and just believe uh, in myself that, you know, this is something that I could do, that I could compose, that I could, um, you know, start a nonprofit. And, you know, it, it took a little longer being here um, on the Eastern Shore, but it was a goal of mine from the beginning. Uh, my wife as well, we just wanted to change the narrative concerning success on the shore and, and whether or not it's possible to still live here and accomplish uh, your wildest dreams. And, and that's something that we continue to pursue and hope that it can be an inspiration to those that are behind us uh, that are growing up here and, and can learn to see value. And, and being in an area that is close to the beach um, is really separate from uh, the noise of the city life, um, tranquil, peaceful, but also be able to uh, compete and work at the highest levels in, in the professional space. So one of the motivations to really showing this new narrative of living on the shore and being able to fulfill your vision and your dreams, um, I just know that a lot of young people aren't really sure if that's possible. I think even growing up, the shore was a great place to, as a musician, to cultivate your talent, specifically in the black church. It was a huge community of musicians that came together and support each other. I think from there, when you think, okay, now how do I gain success within this art form? Uh, the idea is that you have to move to LA, New York, um, and transition that way. And most of my friends did that um, successfully so. And um, I stayed back because I just felt like, man, I would love to prove that living here, uh, you still can accomplish those same things. And, and that's just been a very important thing for me to really inspire other young people to believe in themselves no matter where they live. I think that was a little ahead of its time before technology has sort of partnered with that concept. I think now more than ever, it's, extremely possible to live wherever you want in the world um, with having meetings on Zoom or just networking or online conferences or ways that you can uh, establish relationships through social media. I think never has there been a time like now to uh, try to obtain the success and the goals and the dreams that you have um, living wherever you desire to live. Yeah, I think seeing is believing. It's, it's If you can't see it, if you don't have any examples before you, it's really tough to believe these things can be done. And so I think a lot of times living in rural areas, there's a perception that um, the talent isn't here. Um, you know, a lot of times 
local venues will pull on um, talent from all over the world to come to fill the seats. And I think um, in the arts community, a lot of times there's the thought that the more talented individuals come from these city environments. And I think there's a lot of hidden um, skillful young people in this area that really just need to know um, the region can support their creative abilities. And you know, I think over time, we're starting to change that idea that um, you know, if you desire to be in filmmaking or music or any of the creative arts, that there are venues, there are businesses that are interested in your craft. And so I think, you know, times are changing in that regard and that's really exciting. Um, but initially for me, it was just really trying to, to prove that um, and, and be an example that you can live here and pursue your dreams. Mm -hmm. So I'd say what, what drives me or what is my why um, simply just come from the idea that I believe my gift comes from God. And so on one level, there's a responsibility to sort of fulfill that uh, divine purpose of taking something that's been given to you as a talent and, and turn it into a gift to give to others. And my hope is that through that gifting process to others that, that it's something that inspires or um, uplifts, uh, ultimately uplifts the community as a whole. Um, you know, music can be used in so many different ways. And I wouldn't say that all music is healthy. I think there are forms of toxic music that is really not helping our communities and not helping our culture. Uh, I understand that it's art, but I prefer to make it my mission to spend, you know, the majority of my time and energy trying to produce uh, music and art and opportunities for the community to really flourish off of um, the positivity and the good vibrations that can be shared through, through the art of music. And, um, you know, that's really my why. I really just believe that the world needs music, the world needs um, this art form to be used in a positive way to unite communities and to inspire our young people and really give them uh, hope and dreams um, and, and different forms of ways that they can succeed in life. Advice to my younger self, I think, would be to just continue to believe, continue to be patient, I think my journey is unique in a sense where, as we spoke about earlier, just staying on the shore uh, was a choice for me. It was something that was intentional and it was, but at the same time, you know, I had to believe that at, at a certain point, these dreams and these hopes that I had would eventually materialize. And that wasn't necessarily an easy process, um, but I think I would tell myself to, to really just, just hold on hang tight, um, continue to pursue, continue to, to be patient. And um, these things will fulfill themselves in ways that you can't imagine. And um, you'll be able to share this journey to inspire others and follow those same uh, footsteps. So in 2017, I started a nonprofit called Symphony 21. And essentially, our mission is to inspire youth through modern approaches to music, visual arts, and technology. And I wanted to create something that was larger than myself as an artist and something that could be used as a tool to give back to young people and, and again, show them what's possible. Um, bring in some of my friends from all over the world that are other creative artists and really show young people different careers in music and technology and in the visual space and try to open their mind and inspire them. And I think um, more than anything, even maybe more than education, we need inspiration. We need to prove and show proof of concepts and examples 
um, of individuals doing the thing that we want um, to see the next generation pursue. And, and so for me, I just really try to live through that idea of, of really wanting to inspire the next person um, and in hopes of creating a more united community as well. I mean, you know, uh, the orchestra is not inherently uh, a uniting force, um, traditionally speaking, and to use this particular medium as a way to bring the communities together to, uh, has been an amazing thing to see here in rural areas, which are sometimes a little segregated in senses. And um, so I've really enjoyed how that has really pulled um, everyone together as a community and it's super rewarding to see. Um, and I, I'm just fulfilled every day by seeing um, the way the community has responded to this movement and how young people are, are believing. Um, and they're, they're shooting higher now and they're aiming higher and uh, really looking forward to their future and what they can accomplish. I mean, I, I can probably talk about like insecurity a bit. I can talk about, um, you know, it's, it's really interesting because um, you know, it probably just comes back to faith, you know. Yeah, growing up, there were a lot of times where I battled with insecurity. And, you know, even to this day, it's something that I have to check. Um, I think being a musician, especially um, and pursuing uh, writing music for film and television, this kind of thing as a black composer. Um, and there's not really a lot of examples uh, out there um, that have succeeded in that space. I mean, there's more growing now, thankfully. But I think, you know, sometimes you have to really dig deeper on a spiritual level to get the confidence that you need. Um, it's not always that you live in a location where it's right in front of you. Um, I mean, thankfully I did have a lot of uh, black men growing up that were into music and that were around me and that were willing to, to support the passion that kept me going. But I think ultimately it was just this feeling spiritually that this is what I was made to do. This is what I was called to do. And I think leaning on that greater inner purpose really helped me push through the lack of confidence, um, push through the insecurities and push through maybe some of the, the examples that weren't there for some of the ideas that I had. I mean, you know, some of the things that we desire to do, we may have never seen before. And you really have to dig deep internally um, and however you get there, um, you have to figure out a way to find it within yourself to believe this is something that you can do. And I think for me, it was just, again, tapping into what I believe was my divine path um, and believing that I could actually do it and, and really using that as a weapon against the insecurity and the doubt and in those times where I felt like I'm not sure if I'm the one. Um, and, and also just thinking about the rewards of those behind you, if you were to actually pursue it and succeed, it's like just taking a moment to say, what happens if I do succeed? What happens if I do pull this off? What does that look like for my family? What does that look like for my community? Um, and it gives you a greater sense of purpose and determination to say, well, I'm gonna pursue it with all I have because I can imagine the fruits of this labor and what it can do uh, for those around me. And that really just keeps me going and keeps me, keeps me fighting through those days where I feel like, um, you know, why am I trying to do this? <laughs> this is a lot, you know? Um, but uh, every day just reminding myself that this is what I've been called to do, this is my purpose, um, just really keeps me excited and pumped every day to, to, keep, to keep moving, to keep pushing. I 
think one of the most important things is building relationships, um, nurturing those relationships. One thing that I think about often is that, you know, there's really no such thing as a business. It's really just people, it's individuals. And when we're thinking about networking and thinking about those things, we're really just talking about building relationships. And I think in a rural area more, more so than anything, um, your relationships are really vital and important. And so I would just, you know, think about for any young person that wants to pursue the creative arts or business or entrepreneurship, um, just really be kind, um, value and treasure every person that you meet. Um, you know, humility is huge in, in any business, any craft. Just understanding that, you know, there's something that you can learn from anyone and, you know, just foster and continue to build those relationships. A lot of times the, the opportunities that you desire, they're always going to come through someone's hand or I was going to come through someone sending you an email or giving you a call or reaching out. And a lot of times those are relationships that you foster for, for years and sometimes decades. Um, and so just continue to build relationships with individuals, make friends, and over time, you'll start to see um, these networks and these things working for you. Yeah, I'd say one of the most important things is humility, um, how you build relationships with other people. Really, every business is essentially just a group of individuals and you know how you treat people um, and how you build your reputation amongst your community um, is really going to have a lot to do with your success um, in your future in your business and your entrepreneurship and your endeavors and so you know i really would would just push the fact that you know all your opportunities that you're looking for are going to come through the hands of other individuals if it's a nonprofit you want to start it's those uh, philanthropic individuals that want to donate to to your cause a lot of that starts with your inner circle and the people that you know um, you know whatever business venture you have a lot of those first relationships that you build is your first client base and so you know just understanding uh, how to build relationships and and really have patience for those things to come I think is huge I mean this is something that I've been wanting to do for 15 or 20 years the things that i'm doing today and so just that fortitude to continue to be determined um to hang in there and um to sort of wait until those relationships that you've been building manifest into great things so um yeah just i would say just to be encouraged and just continue to believe don't doubt yourself work hard perfect your craft and um you know be kind and build great relationships. I'm Daniel Bowen, composer, film and television, and founder of Symphony 21, changing lives through the power of music.